climate change has huge human health impacts. And for MSF, as a medical humanitarian organization, we see those impacts on health on an everyday basis. There's the sudden onset disasters, the extreme weather events that actually causes havoc, destroys living spaces and the environment and causes injury first and foremost for trauma. But it also has significant impacts causing diseases for humans. Vector-borne diseases are especially important when there's warming in the environment. The mosquitoes tend to travel further, have longer incubation periods, and they're also smarter in the way they bite people. And that means you have more and more cases of malaria. It's predicted that 15 million more cases will be in the coming years on an annual basis with 30,000 deaths linked to that dengue. On the other hand, we'll have an average of one billion more people affected. And lastly, there is this chronic issues with climate change because of how the carbon is being produced that causes air pollution. The resilience capacity of the communities are less and less possible. The community are the first responders and if they're not able to bounce back, it will cost more lives. Many of these climate hotspots are actually humanitarian hotspots. And we are seeing this becoming much more complex and cascading into other emergencies. We need to work on that, whether that's in the prevention preparedness, in the actual response, in the post-recovery. We're addressing the heat waves and the non-communicable disease like heart and, and lung diseases. For heat waves that's hitting Pakistan, and we're establishing how to prepare the communities around that through health promotion, establishing areas of shelter, to be cooled down, just how to be more emergency prepared. Additionally, MSF is really looking at how we mitigate our response and in the way we do in our carbon reduction mitigation practices, but also in our waste management. But we're also working to adapt our operations, creating more early warning system tools that are connected, not just meteorological, but also epidemiological burden and how that kind of compounds each other. We made a commitment to reduce our carbon by half by 2030 as compared to our 2019 numbers. And we're slowly trying to understand how to measure our carbon and then where the biggest impacts will be in the coming years. I think it's, it's the initiatives to really work with the communities is really important. The communities are the first responders, so we need to actually empower their capacity to do that. The other is innovative tools and how do we combine even artificial intelligence to actually bring together different data that we can then better predict where disaster would hit or where a burden of disease would rise to try to see how we can combine data and actually understand better where burden of disease will be hitting the populations most. We need to make people understand that our behaviors are part of the problem. How do we respond together? We need governments and those who are most um, responsible to also help address this. What we really need to understand is that we cannot do this alone. We need to do this as a collective of humanity, but especially in support of those who are most vulnerable today.